Hey, what's up, guys? It's Dub Winning, and today I've got some more League of Legends news for you. Um, it's kind of a bit more solemn news. Um, with the uh, Curse roster changes, you know, like, uh, Curse has never really been my number one team, so, um, you know, I was, I was okay to, like, just kind of talk about it and be whatever, but uh, there was actually some more roster changes for uh, CLG. Um, Chouster has actually decided to officially retire. Um, he's been playing since 2010. Um, he was, you know, he's been on CLG from the very beginning. He was the only CLG, uh, I guess, starting member that was left. I mean, I, there was uh, you know, Kobe, St. Vicious, um, I'm, like people that have retired, Elements, uh, Hot Shots retired, you know. Um, uh, Boy is now playing, you know, for Curse. Um, maybe I mixed some of that up, but whatever. Uh, and you know, I just think he, I just wanted to kind of talk about um, uh, talk a little bit about Chouster and like what he's done for the scene. Because I know uh, I don't know um, if you guys know this, but Hotshot and Chouster have been my favorite players since the very very beginning. Um, Hotshot taught me a ton about top lane, and I always thought he was just an entertaining character. And then Chouster taught me so much about just the game in general. Um, I always enjoyed watching. I used to stay up super super late and watch uh, Chouster's stream. Um, he would always do like ranked fives with like wings and uh, like double lift and Maggie and stuff like that. And sometimes like Hotshot would come on too, and it was always like the most entertaining stuff. Um, and like even some of uh, some of my mannerisms uh, came from Chouster. Like uh, I, I say like P good all the time, and that's like that was like one of the things Chouster would say all the time. And uh, you know, there's there's the old uh, everything I say is right. <laughs> like oh man. Um, and, uh, I mean, like, Chester has a lot of accolades, you know, I mean, from WCG, uh, you know, first place victories, uh, I think that he had, they had it in 2010 and 2011, um, to being, like, you know, one of the oldest standing CLG members, um, you know, I mean, like, him, Hotshot, I think, I think it was him, Hotshot, uh, Kobe, um, I'm trying, I can't remember off the top of my head, I think... I can't remember off the top of my head the the other um, the other starting members. Maybe I'm a little off there. Um, but you know, CLG has been my favorite team since the very beginning, and so it's kind of sad to see uh, to see Chester go because um, you know I'd like to hope to see that maybe he'll stream more because he he said in his uh, little mini retirement uh, interview I'll, I'll probably have a part two to this video since um, I'm just uh, discussing this with the li limited information I have right now. Um, but uh, Travis. Uh, said he was going to put out a full interview um, about the retirement, so I'll probably have a part two about this, because, um, you know, this this does stand pretty pretty close to close to my eSports heart, you know. Um, I mean, like, if you look, Chouster's, like, one of the only players, I believe, to uh, play all five positions professionally. I think he went mid to top to AD to support to jungle and then to support again. And I know recently, you know, he was getting a little bit of, he was getting some flack and hate for um, his support play. Um, but I feel like, you know, you know, everyone like posts that gif or that video of him just whiffing the, the Sona ultimate, which I think is really unfair to him. Um, just because it, I think he's held at such like a high regard because when he was first playing support, I mean like him and double lift were easily the strongest spotlight in season two. Like, uh, they were untouchable. Like n they never lost lane and, um, and people think like this is like overhyping them, but then they, then they forget like that. Like that's actually how it was. Like they were so good um, that when uh, Chester came back, I believe you know there were some huge expectations for them to just kind of steamroll again. But um, you know it just wasn't there. You know you you do something like this for three years, um, you have to have um, like supreme dedication, and you know it just it started wearing wearing thin for Chester, which I I, I can understand. You know um, uh, what it's good to hear though is it sounds like he's going to uh, he wants to. He says he plans on becoming a streamer and analyst, although I don't know if any teams have the resources or necessity to acquire an, acquire an analyst. While streaming, I will be also going back to school unless a full-time gig in something League of Legends related is actually worth chasing. So what that sounds like to me is that he'll be um, he'll be streaming more, which will be really awesome. Like I'll I'll be actually really happy. Um, but I don't know because Chester's always kind of been. He's never really been that big of a streamer, you know. Even when he had like a streaming schedule, um, he would only stream for three, four hours, you know, two or three nights a week. 
Um, and I would I would catch the replays if I if I never if I couldn't catch it. And I always I always enjoyed it whether he's playing solo queue or ranked fives. Um, I remember like some of the different stuff Chouster had come up with. Um, I, I don't know if you guys remember the old uh, I think it was like the TP promote strat. Um, Hotshot had come up with the promote part of it, but the TP strat, you know, the split pushing with TP was all Chouster. Like um, that was back when you know they pulled that off against SK Gaming. I remember that that was like one of the funniest moments ever. Um, you know, and then uh, I remember I remember him saying this is like way back when um, uh, how he he used to he used to play Zareth in solo queue all the time, and he just talked about how Zareth was just so broken, just nobody had managed to um, kind of uh, play him for what it's worth, you know. Um, and he would play him in solo queue, and he just talked about how like on paper Zareth is broken, you know, like forty percent magic uh, magic penetration, etc. Um, you know, if you have, like, the Void Staff and the Master, you'd have, like, 60-something percent, and he can kill anyone, he has ridiculous range. And I remember him being in, in his AMA, people would ask, like, oh, who's Sleeper OP? And every time he would say Zareth. And then I remember for a couple weeks, Zareth was just huge flavor of the month. Um, I guess for four weeks, you know, or in, like, in the tournament scene and stuff like that, you know, um, some foreign players, and even, like, Reggie whipped him out and stuff like that. And, um... I just remember thinking like that Chowster had called this like a year ago, you know, and uh, Zareth wasn't changed at all. And now um, Riot actually came out and said, you know, Zareth uh, definitely needs to be fixed because he's a problem champion who can just absolutely destroy, um, like just can get out of control. And so they're actually reworking him. So I always thought that was kind of cool. Um, you know, or I, I used to, I remember watching, um, watching him play Lee Sin. And like one thing, one thing I always liked about Chowster is, uh, while, while he'll deny this, he's never really been mechanically the best best player, um, which I know a lot of people, oh, his mechanics are so good, but, like, I'm talking, like, you know, he's he didn't get carried by his, like, world-class mechanics, like, um, say someone like Double Lift, you know? Um, you know, that's why that's why he stepped down, uh, stopped playing AD, is because he just, he didn't have those kind of, like, godlike mechanics. Um, but he always has had superior game knowledge. You know, he's always been really smart at the game, which I always appreciated because that came from practice and like uh, knowledge of the game, as opposed to just uh, you know, you know, a little bit of mechanics comes from like natural skill. A lot of it comes from practice, but a little bit of it is you know just from being able to practice a lot um, and like getting, or a lot of it comes from ugh. Some of it comes from talent, a lot of it comes from practicing, but like game knowledge and stuff like that, that's all like dedication and practice. Um, so I always respected that from Chowster because he, he always had a lot of it. Um, I was reading uh, reading some of the things that the other CLG members had said. Like, I know this is probably gonna probably gonna hit Double Lift pretty hard just because I know Chowster and Double Lift. I mean, they they have a lot of memories together. I mean, they were you know they were bot lane together and like not a lot of bot lanes um, uh, like. You know, I don't know, like I I just, I just remember like uh, if you guys want to check out some really funny series, um, not series, whatever videos, uh, go check out uh, Chowster and Doublelift playing uh, playing through the Bronze League, like Bronze and Silver and stuff when they were leveling up their Smurf. That was like the funniest stuff I'd seen in a long time from them. Um, you know, like uh, the interactions. Like one thing, another th huge thing like that I kind of like picked up from Chowster was he's just very unapologetic about things he actually like truly feels so um when there was like situations going down with like saint vicious and elements and stuff like that chowster voiced his opinion and he, you know if it was if it was his opinion like he wasn't gonna be like oh like you know i like my bad like i shouldn't have said that no it was his opinion so he was entitled to it and i always i always kind of respected him for that um and like i remember he did he had that long-standing ama on uh on clg's forums um, which i probably asked a handful of questions myself there um, I had like six million views or something like that. Um, like a whole bunch of replies. It's just ridiculous. And like he he kept it up for a really really long time. And so um, I always thought that was really cool because um, it was a way for him to kind of connect with the community. Um, I mean, uh, I was reading about you know Kobe talking about Chouster. You know, I wish Chouster the best of luck in his retirement. I always remember playing and traveling with the original members of CLG. And that's what really got me into esports, and I, I thought that was cool because, um, you know, a lot of people comment on you know Chester. He, you know, back in the day, he was kind of like a, he was kind of regarded as kind of a dick because he was so blunt um, with what he said. Um, he didn't really hold back with what he was saying, um, but 
you know, people always also forget, you know, if you see the pictures of him, uh, you know, like dressing up as Tarek for Halloween with his with uh, like from with help from his girlfriend Maggie, like, you know, there there is that different side to him, and you know, all the joking and stuff that he would do with wings and double lift and even hot shot, like, um, oh, which which brings me to like probably one of my my biggest points of respect for him, which was um, in the AMA he would constantly get. Um, he would constantly get questions about GG and Hotshot because you know whenever they would underperform, people would just jump on them, you know. And then people would all, all, always be like, you know, oh why don't you just bench GG or bench Hotshot? Like why are they still playing, you know? And Chaucer would be honest while still defending them, um, which you know, with what I said earlier, Chaucer doesn't like sugarcoat stuff and he doesn't he doesn't lie. He doesn't like. He's not going to say your shit doesn't stink when it stinks, you know? And so, but he, so when he voiced his opinion on things like that, it actually held a lot of weight. So when he said, Hotshot is playing the way he's learned, he's trying his best, um, he's doing what he can with what he has, he's just not, in, it's just not his meta anymore. He completely meant it. You know, it wasn't a way to sugarcoat a way of saying, oh, Hotshot should retire, he's shit. No, it, it was the truth. It was that, you know, Hotshot, was a god in in a meta that was suited to him and then you know after enough time the meta shifted away from that and then hotshot was no longer in his ideal playing field or the fact that hotshot was still providing what he needed to with um with what he was doing and you know they always gave them him respect for that so and then you know we talked about how gg um you know gg used to get a lot of flack about uh um you know underperforming and stuff like that and then you know uh Chester would be the first one to kind of remind them, you know, that Gigi used to be this king, and then he kind of started to lose confidence, um, which came a little bit from his fans and a little bit from the team not really supporting him. And so, uh, you know, he wasn't he wasn't like, oh, you know, we're the fans and the CLG team is why Gigi's underperforming. Like he he, he would also mention, you know, that it should have been uh, should be on his shoulders as well to kind of continue to perform, but. Um, you know, he wasn't just like, oh, you're crap. Um, and I guess uh, his final words to his fans, uh, he ended the statement with, take care, don't rage, and try to work with your teammates in solo queue, <laughs> please, as in like PLS. Um, so uh, that's that's the end of the first part of this video. When I get some more information about uh, his retirement, I'll probably be making a second video just because uh, Chester was, he is still, you know, him and Hotshot have been my favorite players for a long time, and they continue to will be continue to be, and I'll continue to support CLG even though he's not on it. Um, but it'll definitely be uh, unfortunate to see him go. So uh, if you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to like, comment, um, share with your friends if they do not know about the retirement and they want uh, my opinions on it. And I'll see you guys later.